Yeah, I live in Italy and uh, work in the accessible yoga field since 2014 now. Um, and with trainings with Jivana in Europe. I hear a little echo. Maybe if you can turn your sound down a little bit, that might help. Okay, Uma, thank you. And you're in Italy now. Um, where are you? You're, you're on the um, East Coast, right? I'm uh, in Central Italy, East Coast, East of Rome part. And so this is the part of Italy that was hit uh, by coronavirus uh, in the second stage of the whole process. So we are now in the middle of it. Yeah, I'm curious to hear more about that. Um, and Isadora, do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. I'm Isadora, I'm from Italy, but I currently live in uh, Portugal and I've been teaching yoga since 2016, mainly uh, teaching uh, accessible yoga classes. That's the, the only reason why I started to teach yoga, actually. <laughs> Great. Thank you. And Liz, do you want to say hi? So there's still an yes. echo, do you hear? I don't know if yes. we can... Echo, echo, echo. You have to turn your volume down a little. Oh, right, oh, right, right. I'm not sure how to I'm turn your sure. volume. Hold on a second. Sorry, everybody. I didn't know. Okay. Is that it? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Hi there. I'm Dyke. I'm based in the UK. Um, originally from the United States. And I also lived in the Netherlands, so I consider myself a bit multicultural. And I've been doing yoga, started about eight years ago, and been teaching for about five years, and got involved with Jivana, in part because I uh, studied chair yoga with Lakshmi Volker. And I'm so sorry about if my, this is, can you hear me? At all yeah, now? It's just like it is echoing. Um, you know, why don't we? We'll keep going. I'm gonna mute you, Liz. Maybe you could lower okay. your volume. If that's and see okay. if that helps. I have so, lowered it all the way. Oh, maybe it's not you then. Oh, no. Okay. Um, okay. Well, let's see if anyway, I mute you. I got involved with Jivana because I really feel passionate about accessible yoga and I obviously can teach chair yoga that's sort of an obvious thing to be doing but I want to help with the organization and I'm really honored to work with some of the representatives around the UK and Europe. Great, thanks Liz. So I think Uma, you're going to lead us through a centering um, yes. practice? Okay, thank you. So if you like, please close your eyes. Make yourself comfortable, but make sure that your spine is well erect and your chest is open and shoulders relaxed. And what do we have here? in isolation with magical tools to put us together and then a wonderful tool inside our breath let's focus on the breath rising and falling in whole hum human beings, all animals, plants, planets. Be with your breath and feel you're not alone.
ओम शांति 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 थैंक यू what we could do today is talk a little bit about um what your experience is like uh, in in Europe and the UK right now with the pandemic as um accessible yoga teachers and also you know i know some of you have spoken to other people in our community up around Europe so i'm curious how how they're doing do you want to just go around and share a little what it's been like for you personally and for your teaching uh and for your students yeah Do I start? Sure. Yeah. Um I mean Italy was a, uh, Italy was like so hard hard hit by this, you know? I know that's been just uh you were you were dealing with this months before, well, maybe at least weeks before we were here in the US. Yes. Uh we closed our center May 2nd. One week before the official March, Can you hear me? March 2nd. Yeah. Okay. March 2nd, so it's almost two months. One week before the official lockdown in Italy. And uh, it mm. was a tough decision. Uh the one we took to close our center. We we had had, had, had a big crisis a few years ago with a major earthquake earthquake in our region. central Italy but at that time uh, we did not close the center the center we did it now because we realized that people may come to the yoga center to find refuge refuge there but it was not good to stay together we put in place a lot of uh, attention procedures in order not to get in touch but the yoga class was becoming a kind of a mental logical procedure it was not good we decided to close one week before and then starting to find some way not to leave our students uh, alone we put together pla- pr- pr- plans and schedules of different online practices and uh, the main idea the main question was which technological tool do i find to reach my students mm. because accessible yoga student may may not be people who are familiar with technology maybe people mm. with disabilities can a certain kind of technology maybe senior people do not my mother mm. is 60 86 years old and she has an analogical mind for her it's still tough to understand that if she has a smartphone phone in her hand she does not need to push the button because there's no button and this is not clear to her and she does push her finger on the phone and so this is this is the the my 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 main uh my main attention was in choosing the right channel the right tool so right now i'm teaching different classes using so many diverse tools technological tools coming from whatsapp mm-hmm. video calls because it's maybe the closest one the easiest one or even yeah. only audios through whatsapp and then yeah. through google meet and facebooks and zoom at the end but when you get to zoom it's really very technological people <laughs> and it's not really the case so i think it's working pretty well i also explored the, in italy around the italian teachers who have t- taken the accessible yoga training and they are kind of working all into these directions the main purpose is to find the easiest to manage technological tool which is not mm. always to zoom yeah um and it's and it's working but you know 
but maybe I'll give the word to the, the, the floor to the other people and then maybe get back to this issue again later. Uh, I know what I'm doing with the students who are with me daily on online classic classes, but what about those people who I'm not reaching, whom I lost? I have a WhatsApp group of students and I talk to them, write to them every day, uh, anticipated the next day program. And a few people wrote to me separately and told me, you know, this is all wonderful. Thank you for doing that. But I'm hard of hearing. And I, I don't hear. I can get to Zoom, mm. but I don't hear. Mm. So what do we do with these people we cannot reach, even with the simple technological yeah. tools we have at, have at hands now? Yeah. OK, thanks, Uma. Isadora, do you want to share? Uh... Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I had my mic off. Do you hear me yes. well? OK, great. So I have to say that I don't know uh, Portugal uh, yoga community in general that well, and I've been trying to get in touch with some of our ambassadors here. Uh, one is living uh, down in the south, in the countryside, in a very beautiful place we met a few months ago. She's called Veronique, and I hope she's listening to us. Um, <laughs> and she's been telling me that she had problems actually uh, with the Wi-Fi connection because uh, Portugal is really good in the cities, but not really good in the countryside, I suppose. Uh, so she hasn't been able to do yoga classes at, at all since the lockdown. Um, and another one, it's uh, out of the city. I didn't quite understand where. If she's listening to us, I really hope she gets back to me and maybe we can connect a little bit more. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't see the accessible yoga community very active still in Portugal, but I hope they will prove me wrong, or maybe I hope we will start something very soon. Um, the way I felt about the lockdown and about my yoga practice and about my yoga teaching was uh, quite interesting because um, when I started to teach uh, yoga, I had one goal because in my city in Florence, uh, there were no, there are no, uh, accessible yoga studios. So there are no studios where people on a wheelchair can go to. So like I had this big goal of like making this online uh, um, yoga course for people that cannot get to the yoga centers. Um, and then as I was developing it, I found out that the hardest part was actually first to convince people uh, that they can do yoga, even if they're not super fit, even yeah. if they're not super healthy, whatever conditions they're in. Yeah. So that that has been, my goal has shifted from like uh, making uh, yoga uh, classes to create awareness about the fact that you can do yoga, whatever condition yeah. you're in. Yeah. So I started with uh, my MS, uh, multiple sclerosis community in Florence. Um, because the people I'm closer to, I, I was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis, and that's that's the reason why I started to teach. Um, and it's been hard. I mean, I've been sharing with them what I'm doing. I haven't been able to teach online at all since the lockdown, first of all, because I felt that I needed to be in lockdown in the sense that I, like, I, I felt this need of being with myself um mm. and as everyone was getting out there and recording lots of yoga classes and as suddenly all of my friends wanted to do yoga and they were texting me being like oh can we do yoga with you can we do yoga classes online mm -hmm. uh, and and i felt just it was not right for me to feel the need of rushing just because everyone suddenly had time and was at home mm. it was like not the, the feeling i had is that i wanted to be with myself and I was not ready to give emotional support to other people who might needed it because I needed it first, <laughs> kind of. Yes. So I've been sharing some uh, meditations and i am been working on like uh, creating awareness about the fact that you can do yoga in any conditions, getting in touch with the people I know 
like directly contacting them directly on Facebook or on WhatsApp. And and also like writing a lot. I found that this like uh, this lockdown really inspired me like uh, communicating even too much. Like I felt I had I had so much to share. Maybe yeah. too much, you know, everyone is sharing and <laughs> it was a mixed feeling. And I hope I I feel now things are stabilizing a bit. All of my friends who were did used not to do yoga before are doing yoga every day, of course. Wow. <laughs> and they That's say that I advise them to be a little bit careful because I think that if everyone starts to do yoga out of nothing, they should be a little bit careful about like uh Safety, safety, like don't don't practice yoga next to your wardrobe. I mean, be safe. It's very uh, good yeah. to do yoga all the time, but be safe. <laughs> so I think that is the, my main message. Uh, it's really beautiful that you want to do yoga, but be safe. Be safe, yeah. Can I just ask you about the MS community in Florence? I mean, this must be a very challenging time for people with disabilities in Italy, well now everywhere, but I was thinking about Italy that was having so much, so many people getting sick, um, so many deaths. Well, in case of the MS community, it's even harder because we usually are on medita medications that low down our immune system. So we are even more exposed to the virus. I haven't heard like everyone is safe because they basically really lock themselves uh, in their houses. So they're really not going out. Uh, and luckily, most of them have uh, support. Um, yeah. I haven't seen like this huge support from the, the, like, the carers and the people, like, not the carers, you know, just the people around. Like there is not much awareness. Like there is not much awareness mm -hmm. still. Um, and I think with people with disabilities, and I feel the same for myself, the problem is that when you need to be at home all the time, how do you keep moving so that your disability doesn't get worse? Um, so that's the yeah. other thing I've been doing. I mean, I've been saying to people, don't stop moving because otherwise when we will go out again, everything is just going to be harder. So like, mm. let's use this time to keep on moving in a safe way, whatever way it is, and and get ready to get out there again, because hopefully we will all be fine and uh, we'll go back to normal life and we want to be yeah. able to. Um, and there was a, I did a, uh, I had a conversation with Stephanie Munez um, just a week ago or so about that. If people are interested in that question about people with autoimmune diseases and uh, COVID-19. I don't know if you saw that one, but it's available in the group on, under the videos. Uh, and Stephanie is a great resource for that. All right, thank, thanks, Isadora. How about Liz? Do you want to share? How's your sound going? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Can you hear me? Still, can you hear me? Still echoing, but we can hear you. I'll try I'll to try speak. To I can't do much about the echo, I don't the think. Echo, I don't think. So apologies, apologies for that. Do you have a Do you have Facebook open or the? Uh, I have no other no. device on no. in this place, so it's a little, so bit, a little challenging. bit challenging. Um, um, I don't know what to do really. Well, it's okay. I think we can handle it. It's just like you're talking in the tunnel. Okay. okay. Let's, I'll just turn this down a bit and see if you can if you can still hear me. Can you still hear me like now or not? You're fine. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll turn this down and then then oh, I can't better. really hear myself, but that's okay. Um, yeah, that's better. So my personal experience is that I felt pretty much when it happened that I, a bit like um, Isadora, just needed to kind of go to ground and to do a lot of self-care. And so I have been doing a lot of practices to help with anxiety, which has sort of been my hidden disability or condition, as we could say, to help me because of this time feeling quite, you know, with all the uncertainty. Um, and then the one thing I really felt strongly about was keeping my class connected, my community. And uh, I have one outreach class that I teach because I teach a lot in the care homes and nursing homes. And of course, all those classes have been stopped for the time being and uh, most of them don't have any technology so i wasn't i'm not have not been able to be in contact with them 
which is quite unfortunate. Mm. Um, so I decided yeah. to work with my outreach community. And I literally, it took me two weeks to get the technology from my side, but because it's a lot of older people and with lots of conditions, I had to help them one by one to get onto, onto Zoom to do the class. Uh, but I'm really delighted to say that it actually is working now. And the week, weekly class is amazing. And I think that, um, I know they really appreciate it and I appreciate it as well. And one thing I've noticed though about teaching, I've also taught for many years online, but one-to-one -one teaching at, and the group teaching is quite different especially if you are if you're presenting i think it's one thing but if you want to connect with your students online holding the space is it takes up a lot more energy so connecting with each of the individual students if i have 20 people on the on the class in the class i want to try to speak to each one of them before and afterwards so there's quite a lot of emotional energy that i put into that so i find it it's quite exhausting so what's another reason i i haven't put out a lot doing a lot of teaching myself because I need to keep myself in a good place in order to be able to give what I can. Um, so that's been my sort of personal experience. But the what's been kind of amazing is that a couple of students have joined who have disabilities and not been able to get to my outreach class. So they're very excited about coming online. So I'm going to keep doing an online class, a group class, yeah. because I'm now reaching these people who could never get to my class before. And they're so excited. So I feel that's an amazing thing too. So keeping my yeah. students that I've had for many years still connected, but then bringing in new people into the community. That's, and that's, it's been really great. Yeah, I've heard that actually from quite a few people that some, sometimes their classes actually grow um, in size online because people can access from anywhere. Um, not always the case, but you know, at least that's one positive thing, I guess. That's well, great. it is. I mean, but I do have those are students who could get online. I still have a lot of people who aren't able to at all. And what Uma said about the accessibility, they either don't. I mean, I have students who don't have uh, mobile phones, cell phones. They don't have email. So yeah. uh, basically, we talked before I let, before we went on lockdown and then I could call them on a landline, but I, it's hard to do anything at the moment for those students. Yeah. So I certainly want to go back to teaching in person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know you spoke to some other people around Europe. Do you want to share about that, Liz? Yes, I've been had as I want to thank you, Jeevana, for helping me come out of my bubble of being having gone to grounds and encourage. So I called a number of people and it's been had some absolutely amazing conversations. And they're all very we're all grateful to connect with each other again, as what the, one of the strengths of the accessible yoga community is. Um, and so spoken to um, so Leah in Ireland, to Astrid in the Netherlands, to Elif in Turkey, and to Suzanne in Germany, and to B in France. So it's been really lovely to see. And, and all the communities are seeing different things happening. The thing in common was what I just mentioned, when, when a lot of the accessible teachers really want to connect with their community as opposed to present. So different ways of teaching yoga. And they're all feeling that need to be in touch with their communities but then now also it's nice to connect with the wider community and how can we be out there together and share our experiences can you, can you just, can you just explain that a little bit more? Been, but can you explain that more because i think that's such a good point that i think you just made very quickly but i don't know if everyone uh understands the difference you know and i think it's so important which where you, which you describe it as connecting, connecting versus presenting Oh, yes. So because uh, I've also done a little bit of presenting and what I found was it quite challenging it, when you present. I felt for me, my experience is like talking to a mirror, which I do teach to the mirror when I'm teaching myself anyway, which is so I'm, it's not that I'm not used to doing that, but you don't get the feedback from people. I mean, even now with my group class where I can't actually watch 20 people, that's not possible. But still, when I do tree pose, I can see them all doing this at least. You know, there's there's a, is feedback. And when I, when I present uh, and there's no one there, I can't actually see them, there's no feedback. So all the energy comes from me and it's yeah. hard to gauge what, what the feeling is. Have I actually connected with them? And I know that in, you know, when I teach an accessible way, to me, it's really important to adapt on the spot, to really be able to. 
And so the value of teaching my regular class is that actually I've had quite a range of students. I know their abilities and, and so I already have a really good idea. But of course the new students always feel a little bit tricky and I say, I'm here after class if you wanna to talk to me about any of the adaptations so that I can help them one-on-one. -on -one. But when you present, to and you know you don't have the audience there's no way that you can do that because you don't have the connection with everyone it's a very different way of teaching i mean i, I think it's really important actually that came up in the conversation i had with theo uh, wildcraft you know we spoke a couple weeks back now um and that was her point you know about how to how, how to cultivate community in online teaching and it is a special thing you have to do it takes effort to do it um, it's not the same as just teaching online. You know, there's really two different things. So I just really appreciate the differentiation that you're making. And I think it's really important, especially those of us that have um, ongoing classes, especially students with any kind of disability or older people, um, they really are looking for the community part almost more. I mean, the yoga is great, but the community building is such an essential piece of what we bring. That's always been a struggle for me about teaching online, you know, because I've had that same experience that teaching to a camera, it just feels so limited. You know. Again, well, again, I've been very lucky that my class, again, I've known most of them for three years, so we know each other already. So we already have, I think if you already have a relationship, it's easier. So. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, and actually Theo was talking about limiting her classes to only those people that are currently in them so that there wasn't that new people coming into the community and it was keeping that cohesive feeling of the group. Um, so I think that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I might so have done else? that, but then again, I mentioned two particular people who joined and they were yeah. so excited about finally being able to do yoga. I, yeah. I couldn't leave, you know, I just thought, I can't tell them no, <laughs> I have to let them in, so. Yeah. And what else did you learn from the other people you spoke to? So what they else? had similar experiences it's about community, wanting to connect with people. Um, Astrid did, I think, something quite amazing, which was she has a lot of experience and she put together webinars to help 180 teachers go online. Wow. So that to me, making helping 180 teachers to make their yoga accessible, whatever that means for those teachers, at least their students can have yoga. So I thought that was quite, quite amazing. Right. And she's um, in the Netherlands. She already had an online studio going. I yes. Think, so that's yeah, she wide. already yeah. had the technology. So she shared her yeah. knowledge, which was, was fantastic. And we can add a link to that. And also she helps to run our um, Dutch Facebook group. Yes. Um, yes. And we can link to that in the, in the notes. Which maybe later I can do that. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and Leah's doing, in Ireland's doing some amazing work. She's got, she teaches people with cancer, with all kinds of conditions. And she, what she's found has been interesting because she does a lot of classes with groups like, um, you know, the societies. And some of them haven't actually taken up in the spirit that we really, you know, are teaching accessible yoga. So she's found that she, like me, kind of shifted slightly in what we're doing and being a little bit more, uh, selective about how we're offering our yoga, which is important at this time. But um, it's been really, she she's great. And she's also uh, running the Facebook page there, which is great. Yes. Lots, um, lots of energy yeah, and the possibility there. Yes, I'm so grateful to both of them for running those pages. Um, I know, and I'm supposed to be going, we're, we're planning a accessible yoga training in Dublin in April of next year, I hope it can happen. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Um, and then I spoke to Suzanne in Dresden. So that's yeah. obviously just a small city there. And uh, so she's in her place there. And uh, so it wasn't a huge amount about exactly what's happening around Germany. You might have some other, you know, other details about Germany, uh, but she's very keen to get the Facebook page going and wants to do translations, but needs some help on the technology side. So how do you get the translations, for instance, up with the videos? So we could use what Uma was mentioning about the technology. I think even some of us need a bit more training and a bit more help with uh, being able to bring more, you know, the language is an accessibility issue as well for some people. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's something we constantly struggle with. Um, captioning for example like these calls are not currently captioned when they're live like this 
Um, we can't afford live captioning, but we're what we're doing is we're moving them to our YouTube channel, uh, and there will be automatic captions. And I, I wonder if those could be translated. I can look into it. Um, but the language you barrier is such a translate thing. lots of things that are currently in English because there's lots of things available in English. So I think if yeah. we can find ways for all of our languages to do that, would be it would really help everybody. Yeah, I mean, I just want to say that I. I just, I kind of want to apologize just for that, you know, that I feel so um, frustrated about it myself that, every, you know, really everything we produce is in English and um, except for the work that some of you are doing, like Uma, we can go back to Uma in a minute, who's actually teaching uh, and leading accessible yoga trainings in Italian. Um, and we have a few other people like that, uh, like Alma Fandino doing them in Spanish. Um, but it's challenging, you know, the, there's just so many languages and it's just always an issue of how do you do it? How do you translate and then do it well, you know? Um, so it's really about money as well. But I, actually, it's something that we're really looking into with accessible yoga right now, because um, as more of our work goes online for the nonprofit, uh, I think it's just more important that we're conscious of that, of those barriers. Um, you know, like we're going to probably have our fall conference online. We're supposed to be in Portland, Oregon, but I'm just not sure that can happen. And if we go online, then people can join from all over the world. So then there's different issues that come up for us. Yeah. Anyway, anything else, Liz? Did you have... Uh, oh, you no, talked. I spoke to Elif in Elif. Turkey, and ah, she, we met here, her in Berlin. So she and her husband had set up a kombucha business, which has, was going really well until the lockdown, but they're doing lots of things still with that. Um, but she definitely wants to get the Facebook page going there and, and ask for help so we can help her with that, which will be great. Yeah, I think she's here um, commenting, and so is Leah. Um, oh, good. And, and yeah. Anna, Anna Teague, and uh, lots of other people. Um, and someone from Norway, hi. Um, there's a comment, for those who don't have cell phones or computers, you can do Zoom type calls via a landline telephone and do some simple practices. Um, using a chair, doing joint rotation, simple twists, moving arms and legs, etc. A great, a great way to refine your verbal cueing. Uh, so she means doing, doing class over landline, like on the telephone, just verbally. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I just well, did one other person I'll met. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Emma. Go ahead. Uh, just one other person I'll mention. I spoke to uh, B in France, so she's new to our group, and um, I just want. She lives in Nice, and she's just one of those people. Some of us were sort of born accessible yoga teachers. She's one of those people, and um, similar. She's in, being in touch with her community a lot uh, to build her classes. And what she's mentioned in France is that there's a lot of a lot of people are quite negative about technology. So there's a lot of people not teaching online. So a lot of yoga just hasn't been taught. So it will be interesting to see how, what comes of that as, uh, as we come out of lockdown, people reconnecting with community. But yeah. she's happy to help us with a Facebook page as well. So we can bring her into the fold. Yeah, that's great. That French, the French Facebook group needs um, help. <laughs> needs more people there. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uma, what were you saying? Thanks, Liz. Uh, uh, maybe maybe uh, we could add uh, Sweden's case. I reached out to an accessible yoga teacher in Sweden, and I found out that they ha they are not, yoga centers are not on lockdown, so they're open. And wow. she was expressing her concerns with teaching. Of course, she's adopting any precautions and social distancing and trying to, uh, to lead accessible yoga classes without the use of props in order to avoid contacts with material things. Uh, but it's a tough situation, of course. Wow. That's amazing that they're still open. Yeah. It's hard to imagine right now. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, sorry, Yuma, did you have something else? No, I was, so, I was also saying while listening to this suggestion of leading people over the phone with on yoga practices, I think this is 
a great idea and maybe the easiest way to reach those people we cannot re really reach in any other way, but it uh -huh. must be a one-on-one -on -one situation, of course. Yes, that would probably need to be one-on-one, -on -one, unless you have a conference call or something. Yeah. <laughs> just a voice. I do think that just for some people who don't have um, hearing issues, um, it could be good just to have verbal cueing. We don't always have to have video. Some people need the video, um, but some people don't. And so like that comment, it, it can help us to refine our teaching, um, but also it can be relaxing. I know for myself, um, I was I was practicing with a teacher online yesterday and it was very distracting for me to keep, to, to look and see what they were doing. You know, it was like, I just want, I could just follow along. I want a clear um, verbal instruction so I could follow along, you know, just like in a regular class. So in a way, I think it's forcing yoga teachers to be better about that, um, about their clear instructions. Um, I also want to mention, the, I, I said the conference is going to go online, but also the training is going online. So I know that um, you're teaching, right, Uma, you're going to lead a training in Italian. Yes. yes. We were supposed to lead a training in Florence. Uh, we organized that with the support of Isadora. Uh, it was uh, yeah. meant to be June 12th, and of course, it's uh, unadvis unadvisable to do that, maybe impossible. Yeah. So I decided to move it into full online teaching, rushing now, because the time is very strict, uh, rushing now, and uh, but I'm finding few people available to be there. Let's see how many people will show up. Still here, it is, at least in Italy, it is also a question of technological accessibility for teachers. Definitely. For many teachers, uh, uh, Zoom is a difficult thing. So let's right. see how much this issue will uh, affect the participation of the students. But, but anyone can join, right? Um, anyone, anyone wants to take the training in Italian? Yes, anyone can join is in Italian. Uh, it will be from June 11th through, which is a Thursday, through June uh, the 15th, which is a Monday. And we'll do four hours each afternoon for five days, because of course we have to dilate the timings, because staying in front of a computer for eight hours is almost yeah insane i guess and yeah. so four hours a day from 3 30 on until 7 30 um from 11 then, uh, june 11th and then i have one i'm doing in english uh, starting on the june 15th um so from the 15th to the 19th the same format four hours a day for five days uh, in english and we can put links to the information there that's the first time we're doing accessible yoga training online uh, which is exciting, I think. I have been avoiding it for many, many years, but uh, hopefully we can reach more people that way who couldn't come to the in-person trainings, you know. Um, and there'll be, there's some benefits and some problems, you know. You gain something, you lose something too. But, uh, okay, I have one last question for all of you, maybe just to go around one time. I'm just curious what you see in the future for your communities. Like, say... Um, a few months from now, like six months from now, if you could project into the future, like I'm just curious, I'm wondering how local yoga communities um, are going to be able to come back after this, if it goes on, you know, for months, many yoga studios, I wonder if they'll be able to stay open. But I think in a way our work, especially with accessible yoga, if we teach special communities, those communities are still there, they still need us to come so I actually think in a way uh, there's equal, if not more need for accessible yoga. And maybe our teachers aren't going to be so negatively impacted um, in the end, the way that, like I said, more mainstream studios, I think might have to close um, because they can't afford, at least in the US, I'm thinking that'll happen a lot. A lot of smaller studios might have to close because the rent is too much to pay for long periods of time. Um, without anyone coming. So, I don't know, what do you think? Do you have any ideas about that, about the future? Yes. Is that a fair question? 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. If I, if I can go ahead, I'm sure this experience is going to change us a lot. I believe that uh, although the technology used in accessible yoga has its uh, benefits and its limitations, uh, I will go back to in-person mm -hmm. teaching, of course. Yeah. But I think I will keep some online sessions, for sure. I think the future is there. I think the future is there together with in-person. What I learned uh, is that whenever something happens in society, like uh, an expansion of technology, also its opposite comes. So the need of being more intimate. So I guess there will be in-person and uh, online interaction. And this way, I believe we could reach more people. And there's mm -hmm. a benefit in using technologies, again, for those people who have access to technology. Because in a way, I can see, I can see, I, I can observe the behaviors and uh, reactions of my students, uh, those who could get to a Zoom platform, for example, for a meditation. And I can see that in the one side, they really feel more inclusive, included. Mm. And they, being in, at their homes, they don't need to worry about judgment. Mm. They can shut themselves out from the screen i mean i don't need i don't mean that this is good but for sure online teaching gives you the tools to get in touch with other people without feeling judged yeah and this is a great thing yeah great isadora do you have any thoughts is that a fair question for you yeah i think it's a very fair question and i think uh, that is one of the good lessons we can take out from uh, this difficult moment because it brought together people. I mean, people felt a lot the need of uh, communities and find to, like, the need to find the community. And from my point of view, it brought more people, more Italians, for instance, online. So more people finding out about yoga, for instance. So lots of people that mm -hmm. haven't thought about doing yoga before. So I see it as a, a very good opportunity and uh to be fair like uh i i was kind of hoping for a kind of reform within the yoga studios um so maybe that's the good the good opportunity for the reform to come like a more yeah more accessible yoga studios and like also the awareness that yoga is not just fitness yeah, I, I think so. I'm concerned, though, that the ones that can afford to survive might be the larger chains, although someone made a comment that uh, Yoga Works has just closed their New York studios. And Yoga Works is, I think, the largest chain. They are um, a huge chain of yoga studios in the US. But I heard that those studios in New York, um, they said we're already losing money before this, but actually there's something else going on there. And I don't know a lot about it, but I know the teachers in the New York studios were making a union. And I, I, I'm just guessing, but I'm guessing that maybe those studios were closed because those teachers had unionized, oh. um, which is maybe an American issue. <laughs> yeah, also, you know, it depends. Uh, like in Italy, for instance, or Portugal, there was already economic crisis. So now it's going to be tough to go back. Like it's going to be tough for sure, but it's not that we're not used to it, you know? So when we are not, I think we're not starting from a point where everything was great, how we're gonna do it now. I mean, everything was already quite hard. I think I think we can take lots of positive uh, inspirations for our yoga community, thanks to this experience, actually. Great, thank you. Uh, Liz, do you have any ideas about that, about the future? Well, I, mo I do agree with, with what Uma and Isadora have said. And let me just turn my sound down again, sorry. Let me just turn my sound down again. 
Um, and I mean, I hesitate to say anything about the studios because I don't teach in studios, so I'm not really connected with that. That so hesitate to talk about the future of that. But I do completely agree that the online um, opportunity or option uh, will will expand our ability to teach yoga to more people. Certainly, with the people mm -hmm. that I know, I, I reach out to. Um, with the older populations, with people with conditions. I know that they're not having to get to a place, a particular place, not having to worry if you have a wheelchair, if it's going to have stairs or not. It's not, it, that all that's not relevant anymore. It is about the technology and there are issues with that as yeah. accessibility, but I think that they're more, I think people are willing to, to work with those to try to overcome those particular barriers. So I also feel I feel positive as well. I mean, the economy is going to hit as well. We don't know what that's going to mean. And a lot of people are going to have issues with financial accessibility is going to be a serious consideration. Um, and of course, yoga, that has always been a set consideration anyway about paying teachers, et cetera, et cetera. So that will still be an issue of affordability. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do see a more possibility as opposed to less going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think we're in a different situation than um, mainstream yoga teachers who are teaching just in studios. I mean, I, I'm worried for them, but I feel like there's still a huge need to get out into the community the way that like the way that you're doing, Liz, for example. I mean, there'll be that need is still there as long as there's funding still. That That's a concern, I guess, that if the if the um, funding goes away, that could impact classes like yours. Yeah. Um, all right, great. Well, any other comments? Well, I would like to say that uh, uh, an accessibility act has been issued at the level of uh, the European Union. And I'm sure that, uh, I mean, right now we are in a bridge point where uh, yeah. Probably our peop our students uh, were not technological ready mm -hmm. to face a challenge like this. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that from the technolo technological industries, uh, a new way of uh, projecting of, of of conceiving devices will come that are mm. really uh, fit for analogical brains more than digital brains which is our <laughs> parents or... Uh -huh. So you yeah. think out of this, there'll be more accessible technology born? I'm sure yeah, it, it needs to be de developed, uh -huh. but we need to make sure that we use a proper language with our students. Mm -hmm. Using words, uh, I'm telling them in, in English, which is even easier, but can you imagine downloading a file uh open a link what does it mean to my mom I see. nothing so we need to pay attention to the words we are using even if our student got to get to zoom we still uh -huh. need to that's be great. yeah that's such a good point actually i think um especially for older people maybe who aren't used to the technology. Older people. We should be careful with the words we're using and make it may very clear if we're going to include them in these online classes. And I love the idea of there being uh, more accessibility in technology. I think that's a great idea. Um, also, I wanted to ask or mention one thing. We talked about having a, a community uh, sangha gathering online right in Europe in the UK uh, and we even set a date yes is it May 5th yes um, May 5th at this same time was it um, yes which is what it was what 5 p.m 5 p.m uh, in London London, London time and, six, and six, 6 is Italy and Germany time so you would call that 18 18 18 um yeah on, on may 5th so maybe we can make a link to that i think we'll do as a zoom meeting and then everyone can be seen on there we can all come together and do some practice i was thinking we could do it mostly maybe half talking half practice mm. so it's more um engaging you know just 
something to do. We can do some maybe chair yoga, uh, meditation, and then talk. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be on the so I invite everyone to join us then. We'll put a link then for that as well in the notes. And actually what we'll do is put it in the comments from this video on Facebook. And also we'll link to the um, the European Facebook groups um, and the UK one, right, as well um, for accessible yoga there. And I don't know if people realize that we have so many. We have like 25 Facebook groups. But, um, you know, 10 are in different languages other than English or like nine, I think. Um, anything else I forgot to say? No. Ambassador program? Yes, in the ambassador program, we welcome everyone to join. This just new program that we're relaunching. We've had one before, but this is a, now a membership program where you get benefits to be part of it. Um, we just launched like uh, two weeks ago. And um, we have scholarships available. If people can afford to pay, we are giving away scholarships a lot of them. So don't be afraid of the money piece. Uh, we'd love to have anyone be an ambassador. You don't have to have taken the accessible yoga training at this point. It's a way to support our work by becoming an ambassador now. Um, you get access to a private Facebook group. And that in that group, uh, we're going to be doing mentoring for mostly for yoga teachers. Uh, I'm excited about that. And also we're going to do some accessible yoga philosophy conversations in the private Facebook group. So anyway, uh, yes, excited about the ambassador program. And I wanna thank you, thanks for all of your work and for being here today. I really appreciate it. It's been great to have you here. Do you wanna say goodbye? Ciao. I'd like to say goodbye and I'd like to say, I've, uh, I'm seeing Catherine from Berlin following uh, this, uh, this conversation. She, she joined us uh, in 2018. No, 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 you know. I don't remember anymore. Anyway, to the new ambassadors and to, to the to new teachers of accessible yoga, do get in touch with us. Uh, I mean, let's, we are here. Whenever you need us, let's create community and let's work uh, together. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, ciao. Thank you, ciao. everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care of yourself. Okay, bye. bye.